Hi guys, Dane here, and Biggie, he's a bit sleepy at the moment, and today we're going to be doing a quick review of Partners in Crime by Agatha Christie, so I will read the blurb. Tommy and Tuppence Beresford are restless for adventure, so when they are asked to take over Blunt's international detective agency, they leap at the chance. Their first case is a success, the triumphant recovery of a pink pearl. Other cases soon follow, a stabbing on Sunningdale Golf Course, cryptic messages in the personal columns of newspapers, and even a box of poison chocolates. But can they live up to their slogan of any case solved in 24 hours? So this is one of five Tommy and Tuppence books. A lot of people don't like the Tommy and Tuppence books, I think they're okay. My favourites are actually the Marple books, and then I'm kind of fine with Poirot and Tommy and Tuppence pretty much being on a par second, to be honest. I know that's blasphemy, I'm sorry. What's interesting about Tommy and Tuppence as well is that, as far as I understand it, they, like, aged in real time with Agatha Christie herself as well. This is one of the earlier books, so they're still quite young, and as the synopsis says, they kind of inherit this detective agency. What's really cool about that is that it enables this like unique structure for the book. So this is kind of like a novel and it has chapters, but equally those chapters are almost like short stories, except they then fit in the framework of this wider thing of them, you know, going to work for this investigations agency. And actually, I think Christie did it really well in this. I was quite happy with that. Uh, Tommy and Tuppence as well, they do make for a good duo I think they get some good banter going between the two of them I liked in this book in particular they were uh, like there were lots of references to other fictional detectives so at one point they even parodied Poirot which was cool there were some Sherlock Holmes references like all of the golden age of crime is kind of like they, it all gets little nods throughout this as they go about and solve their cases and I thought that was quite cool you don't really get that in Christie's other work yeah here we go here's a great example of how these these references go so let me see, in fact, the paragraph before. So this is right at the start of the affair of the Pink Pearl. So, uh, in fact, let me read you this entire starting scene. What on earth are you doing, demanded Tuppence, as she entered the inner sanctum of the International Detective Agency, slogan, Blunt's Brilliant Detectives, and discovered her lord and master prone on the floor in a sea of books. Tommy struggled to his feet. I was trying to arrange these books on the top shelf of that cupboard, he complained, and the damn chair gave way. What are they, anyway, asked Tuppence, picking up a volume. The Hound of the Baskervilles. I wouldn't mind reading that again sometime. You see the idea, said Tommy, dusting himself with care. Half hours with the great masters, that sort of thing. You see, Tuppence, I can't help feeling that we are more or less amateurs at this business. Of course, amateurs in one sense we cannot help being. But it would do no harm to acquire the technique, so to speak. These books are detective stories by the leading masters of the art. I intend to try different styles and compare results. Hmm, said Tuppence. I often wonder how these detectives would have got on in real life. She picked up another volume. You'll find a difficulty in being a Thorndike. You've no medical experience and less legal, and I never heard that science was your strong point. Perhaps not, said Tommy. But at any rate, I've bought a very good camera, and I shall photograph footprints and enlarge the negatives and all that sort of thing. Now, mon ami... Use your little grey cells. What does this convey to you? He pointed to the bottom shelf of the cupboard. On it lay a somewhat futuristic dressing gown, a Turkish slipper and a violin. Obvious, my dear Watson, said Tuppence. Exactly, said Tommy. The Sherlock Holmes touch. He took up the violin and drew the bow idly across the strings, causing Tuppence to give a wail of agony. At that moment, the buzzer rang on the desk, a sign that a client had arrived in the outer office and was being held in parley by Albert, the office boy. Tommy hastily replaced the violin in the cupboard and kicked the books behind the desk. So I think that's pretty good at kind of conveying both of their characters to you. Even though they're playing at being other characters, that's who they are, you know? This is a spoiler for one of the stories, but uh, it's got to be read aloud just for how funny it is. It's a classic case of Agatha Christie defenestration. A little smile of amusement came to Sir Arthur's lips. I thought as much, he said, but you won't get me this time, I'm afraid, Inspector. I prefer to take my own way out. And putting his hands on the sill, he vaulted clean through the window. Tuppence shrieked and clapped her hands to her ears to shut out the sound she had already imagined, the sickening thud far beneath. Inspector Marriott uttered an oath. We should have thought of the window, he said. Though, mind you, it would have been a difficult thing to prove. I'll go down and uh, see to things. We have this really politically incorrect quote from one of the characters. Uh, 
I loathe fat women, always have. Fat women and fat dogs are an abomination unto the Lord, and unfortunately they so often go together. It is an idiosyncrasy of mine, I know, but there it is. I can never get on with a fat woman. Bashin agrees with you, Mr. Stavenson, said Tommy dryly. And everyone has their own pet aversion. That of the late Lord Roberts was cats. Biggie, the late Lord Roberts didn't like your kind. I know, speciesist. There's a great quote from Mr. Riley. He says this fiercely. And uh, the, this is the kind of thing that I'd say. I'm for peace all the time, said Mr. Riley fiercely. To hell with war. And women. Women. No offence to any female viewers. We have a reference to Edgar Wallace. They, they say they haven't had an Edgar Wallace case yet. We, we get a drunk American who says he hasn't been this drunk since the Prohibition, which I enjoy. We have a moment where uh, someone orders uh, milk and cheesecake. Neither of which I can eat, although I can obviously make my own vegan versions. But <laughs> Tommy goes, women are so literal minded. If there's one thing I hate, it's milk to drink. And cheesecakes are always so yellow and bilious looking. It'd make a good vegan. Oh yeah, we have the the story in which ricin becomes a thing as well. So that was quite interesting to read about. We have one that I don't want to go into too much detail here, but because um, I don't want to spoil it, obviously. But but um, basically, there is a mystery and some alibis come into it. And basically, they chase up the two alibis and they prove both of the alibis. And then I figured out the solution. And then when I told Becca what the solution was. She was like, yeah, that's exactly the most obvious solution. It's twins. There were two of them. Oh, yeah, there was cocaine in this one as well. They found a tin of pure cocaine. Rather a triumph, Tommy said. <laughs> so, yeah, all in all, I did enjoy this. Uh, I mean, it's not Christie's best, and I wouldn't recommend starting with it if you're new to her. But if you've read a few Christie's, and maybe if you've read some Poirot and some Miss Marple, and you want to try some Tommy and Tuppence... This is a good one to check out, although it's the second one, so you could always pick up the secret adversary, the first one as well. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm going to give it a uh, three, a, a strong 3.5 out of 5, which I'll round up to 4 on Goodreads and Amazon. So there we have it. That's what I thought of Partners in Crime by Agatha Christie. Don't forget to let me know what you think if you've read this book. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe if you're new here, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Where did the cat go? I didn't notice him go.